Hello again lovely people! This week I want to take some time to talk about a book that I really enjoyed recently and that is The Mass City by Genevieve Cogman. This book is the second in a series, so if you haven't read The Invisible Library, I would thoroughly recommend you go do that and then return, because whilst I'm not going to discuss any spoilers, I will be talking vaguely about the universe that the book takes place in, so if you want no prior knowledge, go do that, and then come back, and then talk to me about the book. The basic setup of this book is that Irene is now the librarian in residence for the world that the Invisible Library mainly took place in, and she is currently training Kai to be a librarian. Whilst in this world, Kai is abducted, and the rest of the novel focuses on Irene's attempts to figure out who has abducted him, and to get him back in order to essentially stop like a big showdowny war type thing. Because obviously, as we knew, spoilers from the end of the Invisible Library, Kai is a dragon. <laughs> If you abduct a member of the Dragon Royal family, that does not bode well for, like, diplomatic relations. <laughs> so, first of all, one thing that I liked about this book is that it had a really good drive to it. Kai gets abducted very early on, which is why it's not really a spoiler, it's like one of the first things that happens, and so from that moment onwards Irene is constantly working to figure out who has taken him, where have they taken him, how does she get him back, etc etc etc. So the book has a really good drive to the events. It's always working to the next point and building on that and taking it further. There's not really any moments where you're just like sat here like, oh, not much is happening here. It's like always going and working. Which I think it could, the same could also be said for the Invisible Library really. They're not books that really pull punches massively. They just sort of like go places. <laughs> which is great. I really like that. Another thing I really enjoyed, which if you've read the blurb of the book you'll know, is that a large portion of the book is set in Venice, or rather like a Venice, like um, one of the alternate universe Venices. Um, I went to Venice on holiday, I really liked it there a couple of years ago. Um, it's also a really good setting for stories because it does allow you to have, especially in this world, because of the type of alternate Venice it is, it very much plays up to those Venetian stereotypes where you have the mask ball is like a big aspect, lots of people wearing masks, and um, it just works really well for the type of book that this is. The Invisible Library had a sort of like a lot of like kind of steampunky type things, and I feel like steampunk works really well with Venice, just as for the visuals to be evoked by it, I feel like that was a really good choice on her part. Thirdly, the main thing I really enjoyed about this was the further focus on sort of the fae and dragons as entities, if you will. This book didn't really focus a lot on the library itself, but it did give you a greater understanding of sort of the the interdimensional play between the fae and the dragons. Obviously fae are sort of agents of chaos in this world, dragons are agents of order in this world, and you learn, we learned a lot about the Fae in the first book of the series, they were a big focus, and with this second book, because you know what Kai is, you get a lot more focus and exploration of dragons. So by the end of it, I feel like I have a much better understanding of these two forces, and I'm hoping that with the third book, we can go and maybe I'll get a bit more understanding of something further, whether that's the library, whether that's something that I don't even know about yet. But I think that was really good as like a balancing act, so now I can go forward into the third book with a slightly fuller knowledge of this whole like extended universe, because there's multiple worlds. <laughs> that note leads really well into another thing that I really liked about this series, and that is um, based around a concept which is not a Cogman concept, but is one that comes from Michael Moorcock who, if you read a lot of fantasy, you may well be familiar with. If you're not, I would really recommend him, he's great. Um, and that is sort of the concept of the Eternal Champion. So in Michael Moorcock's world that he writes in, you frequently have this concept which is the Eternal Champion, and the Eternal Champion is sort of um, an agent of balance. As with this world, you have order and chaos. So in the Mass City, you have order is dragons, chaos is fey. In Michael Moorcock's world, there are often agents of chaos and agents of order, or rather law, as he mostly refers to it. And in his books, you frequently have um, agents of law or agents of chaos having too much power, and then there is a figure who is the eternal champion, 
and it's sort of their job to maintain cosmic balance. If you have read this book, you will kind of see why that is relevant. As was briefly mentioned in the Invisible Library, I think, sort of the purpose of the library is kind of to maintain that balance, you know? With this as your context, Michael Moorcock's books frequently take place in different universes, but all of these universes are sort of connected because the figure of the Eternal Champion runs throughout. It will always be different people in different universes, but it's like they're eternally... <laughs> eternal Champion, Sophie! Yes, Eternal is part of that! But what I mean is it's not always the same character, there are multiple characters who are Eternal Champions, and I feel like with this book you could sort of look at Irene and the Library as that Eternal Champion type figure. Worlds that have too much influence from the dragons are too, too ordered, and worlds that have too much influence from the Fae are too chaotic, and then you can get like chaos contaminations are briefly mentioned in the invisible library if you spend too long in a world with a high chaos content you become contaminated and all of this stuff and so the whole purpose of the library with them getting these books is to maintain that sort of neutrality that fabric of that world um and keep it sta stable so that it doesn't go too far one way so i just found it really interesting reading this you get a lot more knowledge about dragons, but you do also get a lot of focus on Fae again, and you learn more about Fae society at large, rather than just like individual Fae's like you did last time. Um, all of that, just the whole time I was reading it, I just had in the back of my brain this concept of the Eternal Champion and of maintaining balance and cosmic balance and all this stuff. And I just really, that's why I wanted to make this video, because I felt like it was such a parallel, and I don't know if it's conscious. It is obviously a topic which you can approach and you don't have to be like consciously making a nod to Michael Moorcock. However, as someone who has read both and who really likes both, it was just something that really added like an extra little thing to this for me. I was just like, ooh, this is cool! So I'm gonna leave it there because I think I've been spoiler free this whole time and I don't want to go into spoilers because a lot does happen in this book, like so much happens, and it's all really great and I really really enjoyed it. I just wanted to do like a little snippet of here are some cool things about this book and if you've read the first one or you haven't read the first one and you've just watched this anyway, I'd really recommend you dive into this series because it's really fun. The biggest comparison I hear with this is always Doctor Who and I really can see how that's the thing, especially with the Eternal Champion topic because many people have argued that the Doctor himself is like a manifestation of the Eternal Champion. So just for your for your little cogitations think about it long story short really enjoyed this great second novel has just fueled my enthusiasm for the series i will definitely be getting my hands on the third one and hopefully many more i hope this is a continuing series not just a trilogy because i'm thoroughly enjoying it and i feel like the world have so much more to give so this was just great and i really liked it if you have read this or read the series or have other recommendations based on this series, as per usual, please do let me know. And if you are a Michael Moorcock fan and have stumbled your way across to this video, please let me know if you also feel the same about this series. Just a quick disclaimer, I grew up with Michael Moorcock, so I have like residual knowledge of him. I'm working my way through the Elric books, not finished with them yet. Please don't throw spoilers my way. <laughs> Thanks. Have a lovely day and I'll see you next time.